Welcome to Talking Mind with a Bowtie Boy. I'm Tom Saviello, and I have my good friend Richard Corey with me again. Richard. Yeah, good to see you again, good. Tom. It's great when you come on because I get so fascinated with the stories you tell about Wilton. So we moved from East Wilton, yep. and we're going to talk a little bit about the history of Wilton itself, downtown Wilton. We sure are today. We're going to talk about some of the buildings that were around the monument area in downtown where Casaleos and Ambition Brewery and uh, where the Civil War mo uh, monument is. So Super. we're going to take a look at some of the buildings that are down there. Okay, today. great, great. And I think we've got some pictures that Andre's put into the system for us and Tommy. Yeah. And so I, what, you want to go right to the pictures and work off of that? Or do you sure. Want to... No, I think we can do that. So, All right. Yeah. So we're ready. We're ready anytime you are for number one, which is the picture, I think, of the old Dugway, isn't it? Uh, the old canal. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Well, we're taking a look at the, the uh, museum, the Wilton Historical oh, Society yeah, Museum, yeah. is the white building you yeah, see yeah. there. And this picture is taken from like the perspective if you were at the boat landing at Wilson Lake yeah. and looking down downtown area, and that's Canal Street basically. And the, this is a a view of the sawmill that was there too. Is for one of the earliest uses of that area was a sawmill. That's when wow. Samuel Butterfield moved over from East Wilton to uh, Wilton in 1797 and started to, to do the extensive works of uh, dugouts and uh, dugways and canals and uh, penstocks there in Wilton uh, using the outlet. So the, the Historical Society, Wilton Historical Society building was ba there before the big red building was built? Correct, wow, correct. I did not okay, know that. the Historical Society's building is known as the Rossum Fuller's House. And basically, he uh, built the place around uh, 18, 18, 1860 uh -huh. uh, or during the Civil War era, 1860 ish. And during probably the middle of it, he was a Civil War veteran and basically he moved up from Jay. He was a Jay native and he. He, he started building that, like I said, in the middle of the... Uh, but he, he didn't build it as a... Later for Bass, it became kind of a boarding board, house. That's, that's but correct. But he built it as a regular home? Yes, because he actually had the business there. He, he uh, purchased the uh, sawmill and was running the business there, uh, a sawmill. And so he, uh, uh, he was a Civil War vet, like I might have mentioned and stuff. So he was probably had that built right around 1865. We do know that he, uh, one of his, his son was born in 1866. So we know that you know he did some service in the Civil War and then probably came home, had a son, and then that's where he stayed for a little bit. Wow. And you know what's interesting about uh, Fuller? He, he disliked mud, I think, because uh, <laughs> with his son, uh, sawmill, um, he actually was able to make a lot of planking. And it is said that he was responsible to put sidewalks all the way from where the Bass Building now is, all the way down in Dryden, is for wooden planks, and no that's kidding. where it was we like a boardwalk. And yeah. as with you being one of the Wilton select persons, as far as uh, there was the Ro Rossum Fuller of uh, Sidewalk Fund. Oh, no kidding! Yep. So that's it came from. No yep, kidding. Yeah, yeah. He when he died, he left about thirteen thousand dollars, I think, to the town for sidewalks as well as Wilton Academy and. I think one of the churches and stuff like that. So no I think that's kind of kind of ah, cool. So. And we actually do use that fund to match. That's why we've been able okay. to enhance the curbing and the sidewalks that mm -hmm. we have in town. Mm -hmm. So that's where that came from. It's just yeah. that old. Wow. Yeah. So that's, that's pretty cool. So when Bass was actually looking to uh, build a plant, whatever they wanted to buy that property, and so that's what uh, they ultimately did. So if we look at the next page, next picture coming up. It's a picture of the, oh, the, the, what was now the old Bass Building, but it, it's the new Bass Building in this picture. In the sense. Yep. Okay, we, what we have is a, almost a similar view as the previous picture, but, but just the angle's a little bit different. You can see the museum on the left-hand side yep. there. You can see just the, Upper right left. where the patio is right now, basically, is right in that area. And so between. the sawmill, it was where the Bass Building is Correct. now sitting. So, it, so so Bass uh, approached Fuller and they sold the, the property there in 2000, uh, not 2000, 1903, 1904, and they started constructing this building uh, just about at that time. And I bet you, you know how much this building cost in, uh, to build in 1903, 1904? 
thousand dollars. It was thirteen thousand dollars. Thirteen you know, thousand dollars to build this building, wow. and uh, apparently, uh, it, if they wanted to have a special type of flooring, whether it was maple or something like that, they would add two hundred seventy-five dollars. Oh, Jesus! So, so it's amazing. It was a company out of uh, Auburn that came up and uh, built this and building. And it's still there. Yeah, you can kind of see the old depression of the uh, canals right yeah, along the yeah. building there and stuff like that. So yeah. that's, um, wow. Bass had moved uh, from down, they had a plant down by McKillicuddy's Park. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And that's, you know, that they really outgrew that location. And then that's where they, they built this one up in here. Wow. Here's kind of a busy map of a downtown Wilton. You're probably right around 1870-ish. And it shows, you know, Wilson Pond and the outlet and some of the canal systems as far as, uh, and also the waterway, the darking area, dark area is Wilson Stream. And you can see all the different buildings that are there. And you can kind of see, oh, there's an, uh, SM where is where the sawmill is, and you see uh, J. E. Hiscock right there yep. too. That was he operated the sawmill apparently at that time. But interesting as far as you see, kind of a dashed line. It's uh, from uh, right above Hiscock, and it it was a penstock that ran all the way yeah. down through town. Now a penstock is kind of a enclosed uh, tube or or canal that uh, was buried there. Um, and it, it supplied a lot of different water sources to the various uh, takeoffs down in Wilton. You know, we know that there was probably, you know, you know, a, a dozen or so more businesses uh, mm. or factories that relied on this water here. You know, we have the, you know, starting with the sawmill and the grist mill, and it went down through, and there was a woolen mill and a tannery and things like this. But this kind of gives us a, a, a good picture of how busy Wilson Stream was during uh, this time. And, and that's one of the things as a selectman, as we take some of the uh, money that we have coming into us, I've suggested that we look into the integrity of that. Because mm -hmm. the last thing we need to do is find out that, oh, it's, a, it's going out of control. And a couple of the buildings that now are on top of it all of a mm -hmm. sudden fall into a deep hole. But yep. wow, that's fascinating. Yep. Wow. All right. Okay, we've got the next picture here. It's uh, sort of, we're right by the bridge in... Uh, Wilton, looking yep. up at the outlet. And we have the sawmill on the right. And you can see the side of the sawmill and stuff, and you can see a dam in the very distance, and then a uh, building off to the, the right there is, uh, we'll look at in the and, next and that, slide. And that's basically where Causaleo's patio is, correct? Correct, yep. correct, yep. So that's this, uh, and where the ice cream store is, the first building yep. you see is right where the ice cream store is. And uh, the, um, the, the dugout area there, dugout, dugway, uh, was probably dug out by um, Butterfield and his brother Henry uh, back during, like, like I said, 1797 uh, to control that channel and stuff like that. Because, you know, it's probably not that way in nature. It probably was yeah. meandering yeah, and, and stuff probably like small so. because so it was, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it would be really tough to really know where that course of the stream really was. Wow. Next one. Oh, yeah. Well, soon here we'll, yep, here we have uh, the outlet. Yeah. We're looking down at the outlet, and that bridge that we see is just about right, the same location where the bridge is now that goes to the uh, uh, the boat access. And you can uh, make the, the bass building in, out on the right middle right-hand side. Yeah, you can see it in the real distance there. Well, yeah. this this building right here was initially was a, a wood uh, peg factory. Huh. And only operated a couple of years. Uh, apparently, there was some pegs, wooden pegs that had to be uh, used in making shoes and stuff like that. We're talking very early on here, uh, probably in the 1860s and stuff. And but the town wouldn't give him a tax break, huh. so he actually he moved. Huh. He moved to New Hampshire, I think, down in the Keene, New Hampshire wow. area, I believe. So. Um, ultimately, about 1873, um, a family name of Sawyers that came to town that were big uh, 
a big name as far as uh, commercial development of downtown area during that period of time. And they started a, a corn a canning factory here. Oh, so, so the, this was uh, a, a canning factory. Oh, and so, uh, so they would not only just corn, but they probably did they probably did apples, and, and I have, I've heard of uh, even canning meat sometimes later on, you know. Next picture looks like kind of a celebration. Oh, it is sort of a celebration. You know, this is one of my favorite pictures of downtown Wilton. It's uh, probably taken around 1890, and we've got a lot going on in this picture. You know, you got to think of sort of 1890 is for... The United States or the Northeast, we were really interested in what was going out west. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is kind of like a Wild West show. If you look closely at these uh, these pictures, it's basically uh, uh, men uh, dressed up uh, uh, on yeah. horsebacks with uh, Indian outfits yeah. on and uh, uh, cow cowboys and stuff like that. And I think what they're, the building down in the the center there, I think, like a burnt out cabin or something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, 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 really, yeah. Oh, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can see, but it's a really a great photograph because what this this picture does is shows all a lot of the buildings that were in the downtown area here. There's only one building that's currently left there, and you can see way in the distance. In you the can top. see up there. In you the can right. see the old historical society. Yeah, yeah the old bas uh, the old uh, boarding house or boarding the full yeah, 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 house. house. Yeah. Now and. We to to the left of the picture there we see the roof of the sawmill and just uh, down uh, just before that we see a lower structure which was uh, the the millkeeper's house uh, 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 yeah. Captain Fernals or or one of his hired men uh, and stuff like that and of course we have uh, some of the other buildings right next to the historical society is an old storage unit and we have the open uh, horse so wagon shed saying, right yeah, there yeah, you yeah, can yeah, kind of yeah. see that and then the next building. Uh, in this kind of the center is the Sawyer, um, kind of the dry, uh, dry goods, general dry store. goods stores. Yeah, even down bottom here too. As far as but there was that other area in the middle there was used for several different other companies, and we'll cover them in a minute here. But mainly, let's take a look at that building on the on the right there. There was a W. E. Sawyer. Uh, dry goods and uh, grocery store at the time, and upstairs, Tom was the town hall. Oh no, kidding! Yeah, the huh? Town hall. It was a town hall, and it has an auditorium and stuff. Wow. And it had, you know, they had plays there, and uh, you know, probably graduations and stuff like wow. that. And and we got a couple pictures, uh, not today, but uh, during the 1903 celebration uh, of. The, the well, uh, 100 years old. 100 years old. There's some pictures of, uh, of that building up there. Did it burn down? It did, and we'll see a picture of it okay. in a little bit here. Okay. Okay, and, and a few, few years later, you know, we have another similar view, but what we do, ha we have a new building on site here. We have that grist mill on the left-hand side. You yeah. see that large structure yeah. there with the tower and stuff it's like kind that. kind of where the ice cream shop is now. Exactly. And that was that right there was built in 1899. Wow. 1899. And earlier, there was a fire. We're going to cover one fire, but there was two buildings off to the right where the, the Sawyer grocery store is. There was a grist mill there, and there was a uh, Stark factory, you know, for m making, getting starch out of uh, potatoes okay. yeah, and yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, starch probably, yeah, yeah. And... That burnt, those two buildings burnt, it was the first great fire of Wilton, uh, and I believe it's 1886, and it's a wonder that it didn't burn down more of that side of the river. They said that the wind came up and actually started blowing the embers towards wow. the lake, or else they could, would have lost uh, uh, that whole side of the uh, of the street. Wow. And we're going to see that Wilton did, in 1893, lose one side of the street. But let's go to the next one here. Oops. Now here we have another similar view, but right now we got the Civil War monument there. That was constructed in eighteen, uh, not eighteen, um, nineteen twelve, nineteen twelve, and that would be fifty years after the Civil War. Yeah. I actually have an old newspaper at home somewhere that went through the different legislation that was passed. It was called mm -hmm. Argus. Mm -hmm. And if you look in it, it talks, shows many of the towns that came along that got money from the state to build those monuments. And mm -hmm. they were not to cost more than $250. Yeah, it's amazing. It's, yeah. I have seen some figures on that. And I, a guy named Adams was re, kind of responsible for some of the work. I, I can't remember the first name, but I'll have to take a look at it. But it is neat. It's first, 
we had a lot of Civil War uh, veterans. veterans here in Wilton and stuff. And, and there was a uh, publication that came out, I think, about 1900, as far as that it listed all the pension, the people that, that was receiving pensions. And there was like 30 or so uh, right around that time period wow. of Civil War veterans. Wow. And you, and you still see, now the fire hasn't hit yet because you have the grist mill on the left. You have the old bass building, shoe building in the back. You've got the historical yep. society yep. in the middle, the livery stable. I mean, there's still the uh, water hole, the water fountain, water watering spot in front of that today. Yeah. And then those two buildings are, one's a parking lot and one of the other is where Key Bank is as you move to that the is, right. That is correct. I gotcha. All right. Next picture is a picture of the... Of the uh, the Historical Society, Society. or w Wilson Lake Inn. <laughs> wow. Well, we've talked a little bit about it already, but uh, we talked about that it was initially a, a Fuller's house, and then uh, Bass pr purchased it in 1904, and he was he wanted to use it as a boarding house. As far as you got to think, as far as before the advent of the automobile, and you know, he had a number of uh, workers, workers that came, had yeah. to come in from away, you know, from outskirts of town even. So they, they boarded here. Uh, and we know that it served as a boarding house for them right up until the early uh, 1940s. Wow. And then they started to use it as open to the public as the Wilton, uh, Wilton Lake Inn. Ah, and okay. uh, it still was mainly uh, used for housing uh, salesmen and, and workers and stuff at that time. But it, at that time, it had been opened up to the, the public. Now, how long has the Historical Society had that? Do you know? I believe it was given to us around 1987 or something like that. Yeah. But don't don't quote me on yeah. that. But it was right around that period of time. And we can see, we've been seeing changes over time as far as the pictures. We know up on top, there's two dormers that are up there. Um, that there, they right. weren't initially there. And there was kind of a, I call it breezeways that was enclosed, uh, that kind of connected the two buildings. If you did a comparison of all the old photographs that we have of this cool. area. Wow. Okay, the, here we have a picture. This is a, this is a picture, part of what I call the Sawyer block. Right, and right. And we see right on the left, we see the corner of the right. grist mill and stuff like that. This picture here was given to me my, by my cousin, Annie Ager, uh, and her father, uh, her, her grandfather actually was a meat cutter, and he had a wood, uh, not a wood, a meat business here in town, and his name was Morris York. And if the picture was clear enough, you could see uh, Morris York meat cutters, a uh, meat market. and. His son, uh, Robert, Dr. Robert York, uh, ended up to be uh, a professor down at USM. Uh, he died uh, 10, 15 years ago. But uh, he was really responsible for the Historic Preservation Office down in, uh, in Augusta. Uh, he saw the demise of the Union building uh, down in Portland, and he knew that in the early 70s, and he wanted to have some preservation. So he actually was very instrumental in starting the Historic Preservation Office there. And um, now, was uh, he related uh, to the Dr. York that was distance? Distance, distance yeah, yeah, that was in town also. Yep. So cool. And then this is the so the next one is the actual Sawyer building, building itself, and the town, town, town office hall. was up yep. on the second floor. Yep. And uh, this here was take, taken in 1919, right at the end of the First World War. You can kind of see the celebration, and with the, I get I get some of the photos mixed up because of the uh, to the, uh, the 1903 celebrations look very similar. Right. But uh, this was um, this building here was like we had mentioned was served as the the, the top part was the town hall. Wow. And the they were celebrating. Building. They had enough of those flag. Things all they over the did, place. They, they did. They did. So, but we do know that that building did not last very, uh, a real long time. In the either the late fifties or early sixties, there was a, a fire there, and it destroyed uh, basically in, the integrity of the building. And uh, you can actually you can see the, the current bank on the right-hand side mm -hmm, where mm -hmm. Kuznalls has uh, apartments and offices and stuff like that. So, and it's interesting to see too as far as the old gas pumps off the left, as far as, um, I don't have a picture of it, I should have probably put one in. Uh, the old, after the grist mill was 
taken down where the ice cream store was. Uh, Brookside, it was a gas station that was put up in downtown there, and that was there for a long period so of time. So I've told people that when I was 12 years old, I got gas at that gas pump. Yep. We were coming through town, I still remember it. Yep. I don't remember the buildings, but I remember the gas pump, and then we found a little place to get something to eat when we are in town. Wow. Yeah. Okay, and then, of course, on the where a bank was built in uh, about 1908, right adjacent to the uh, Sawyer Block, right there, uh, Canal Street's right behind there. So this would be right at the intersection of High Street and Canal, Canal Street. Wilton Trust and Banking Company. Yep. Um, when you, uh, Morrison Keene yep. family had a lot to do with this uh, bank. Keene Morrison. Keen Morrison. Yeah. I always get that mixed That's up. all right, because the only way I know Keen is that the, where I live in Wilton is the apple orchard. That was Keen Morrison's yes. apple orchard. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, here's one, one, another favorite picture of mine, too. Here we are looking up High Street. Wow. And you can see um, the open lot right there is where that bank we just saw was built in. But the, and then we have the Great Wall Chinese restaurant on the right. Right, yeah. yeah okay. Yep. And then this building here, the big one with the uh, the door, central door there, was uh, the the Fenderson House, and that building was actually moved up to the f lake. Yeah. Okay. The Stoles, yeah, yeah, I think, yeah, and I think Stoles, uh, yeah, the yeah. general manager of uh, the paper company, United actually, Timberlands. Yeah, 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 it was. Yeah. 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 And. Uh, that right there was uh, Charles Morse House. It was built in um, 1824. And I was going through some of her records, and it's kind of neat as far as uh, uh, the, one of the sons was mentioned how the mother uh, d just didn't like how people were using their front yard, basically were coming and going from the, the sawmill and the other factories down there so they cross right over their yard their pretty <laughs> yard so in 1840 they 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 put those trees in this, oh, wow. this here we have a newspaper article of this son telling us about how this was constructed so in 1840 those trees were put in and they put in the granite elevated area so that avoid uh, people would have to go, kind of walk around it and instead of going right through their yard. Now that's where the parking lot is now. That correct? is correct. Yeah. yeah. So the municipal parking lot is up yeah. in that Yeah. Right? And that building wasn't moved until I believe around the 1950s, you know, so it's relatively recent in, in Wilton's history. Hmm. And here we have the yeah. next picture as we're going up looking up the uh, Wilson Stream to the outlet, and we have the Hiscock building on the left. Yeah. And we have the Miller's uh, house on the right. Yeah. And uh, Hiscock was uh, kind of like the town manager, and, and he was responsible in 1904 to, for water being uh, come to uh, Wilton, uh, dug from Farnham Pond down. And I just learned this week, Tom, this is interesting as far as uh, from the water department people, uh, Dale. He was telling me that uh, the, the immigrants, they hired a bunch of immigrants, I, immigrants be I believe uh, they were. Uh, right. from, from Boston area, I believe, and they came up and they had a camp right near uh, the Colby Miller Road, uh -huh. right up in your, up in your in neighborhood. neighborhood. Yeah, so they would have a, a big camp up there because I'm not sure how many of those, probably several hundreds yeah. of, of people that were working to d dig on this. No kidding. Yeah, the water line goes right in front of my property that they hand dug. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So here we have our the next picture here we have of uh, the grist mill. Oh that yeah, was, okay, the, yeah, the, yeah, that yeah, was yeah, the big yeah, grist yeah. mill right where the ice cream store yeah, is yeah, now. Yeah. Yeah. And that lasted up until about um, I think the early thirties. And replaced by Brookside where you got the gas. Yeah. Huh. You see the bass in the distance. Now, did Brookside have a little, uh, like, cafe in it? I don't know. I'm a, too yeah. young, and I was over in East Wilton. I didn't get to Wilton yeah, very yeah, often. Yeah, 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 okay. <laughs> and, okay, well, then here's some more series of kind of pictures of uh, the Bass Building. Uh, here we have a be uh, next picture. Uh, did, did, if I'm correct on the Bass Building, didn't the town kind of build it and then sell it to Bass for a dollar? 
or something like that. Do you, have you heard that story? Now I heard that no. he had, that we had with the town had kind of financed it, and ultimately because of all the jobs and everything, and we sold it to the Bass family for a dollar. Oh no, I haven't I haven't seen that yet. Here we have a picture of the Bass factory as it would look in a, a 1904, with the various. Uh, they had two more additions later on, and the next picture we can actually see um, how it looked in. 1912, with the addition of a, a maybe of a floor, yeah. I believe, uh, uh, and uh, some other yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it is, yeah, the fourth. Floor and then, is. and then the next picture we have is uh, is another picture of Bass, and this is how we kind of look at it right now, as far as basically with Casaleos down bottom in the basement there, and yep. and yep. Uh, yep. I think I've mentioned in, uh, in some of our shows before. My father was a hand sewer, uh, and he actually worked in this building and he would have uh, on the top floor. Wow. Yeah, right where that is. So, so Richard, we got about five minutes. So okay. We, well, well, and don't rush. Yep. This is fine because what we'll do is we'll, when we get to the two minute warning, I'll tell you and we'll just hold the rest of the pictures okay. and, and well, you can just add to them as we go. Let, let's uh, kind of quickly go through the next pictures here. This is a view of uh, Main Street, where like Just the Ambition the... Brewery is, where that big building uh, on the right, yeah, yeah. that's where the, the Wilton House, uh, that's a kind of a hotel lodging. And this is how the street looked prior to the fire of 1893. So this is across the street from the right. uh, Sawyer complex. Yeah, exactly. And we're looking, right, I said that the uh, Ambition Brewery and down further would be where the Wilton Hardware yeah. store would be. Oh, wow. But then we had the next picture here. We show the dev devastating effects. Here we have a picture of the f of the aftermath of the fire in eight of April second, I believe, uh, eighteen ninety three. And this is where we're looking down where the library is currently. Right, right. You, and you can see the uh, a Congo Church right there on the left hand side of the road. So it stayed on that side of the road. Yep. Huh. Wow. Yeah, I have uh, maybe the, if we looked at some close up pictures. The next picture. Yep. Uh, we, we can see where they put planking and wet uh, rags on the buildings on the opposite side in order to avoid the heat. Wow. And here we have a picture of looking back towards uh, uh, Bass, Bass Hill. Hill. Yeah. We can see the Fernal Place there up on the upper right hand side. Yeah. Wow. It's and then the here's fire. the next picture here too. We were showing, uh, looking back at the monument area. Yeah, this is great. You see the Sawyer block, a Sawyer building, the yeah, big yeah, white yeah, building, yeah, yeah, yeah. Canal Street right behind it. Wow. And then you can Nothing. kind of see it, it saved. You just think as far as with that massive building, with that hot of fire, it's amazing that the whole town yeah. did not go up in smoke. But wow. the, I, this is a kind of a, a great shot, and you can kind of see the uh, uh, Miller's house there and the the um, wow. historical society there in the distance. Yeah, yeah. And well, maybe we'll see the next picture. Yeah, well, you know, nothing keeps some Yankees down here. Real quickly, within a couple of years, they built that street back. And here we have a, probably a, a probably an, a Fourth of July celebration here. I'm not sure whether it was the end of uh, World, uh, World War One on 1919 photo or or what. But anyway, we have a, a nice picture here of how it looks, and it looks very similar as it does today. So why don't we, Richard, since we're yep. getting running out of time, stop there because I think you're going to talk a little bit about the yep. Bass Shoe history at this point. Yep. This, that, this, is a, this is a good spot to, to stop. stop. But this is fascinating to me because I knew it had been a fire, but I didn't know how devastating it oh. was. Hey, I just noticed, Tom. Take a, okay, maybe, well, go back one. Go back one if we could. Go back one. If we got one more minute, I do. I think we can go back one picture. I think it's, it's, it says it's 1903, doesn't it? Right. Okay. Yes, it, it could be. It yeah, could so, be that celebration. But it still shows yep. the, yeah, the what's yep. going on. Yeah. Well, so, anyway, yeah. I just saw a picture of the kind of a sidewalk there. Oh uh, yeah, 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 so, yeah, yeah. You kind of see on the left hand, yeah. kind of a wooden sidewalk. Yes, here. I do. It's I mean, so and it's fast, fascinating that that that's how long that trust fund has been around since he put it into place. It is amazing uh, that see that kind of effort that was there. But it's amazing the history of these towns. That are yeah. out there, and the, the dugway that's going down there. I mean, that supplied the electric, uh, the energy to run the bass shoe place because they had a yeah. generator down below. Yeah. 
and, and then watch what, how that town grew and how it's changed so much. No, it's great. So, Richard, we'll come back. We'll get yep. you to go back on, and we'll start with the Bass Building, and you can add to the, okay. the deck. And, and ultimately, like we've talked, I want to come downtown and walk it with you and see some of these oh, places. Oh, this would be great. Cool. Richard, thank okay. you. As thank always, you. Okay. mesmerize me. It okay. was great talk. Wonderful. Super. Hey, tune in next time. We'll have Richard back on in a couple of weeks, and we'll continue the story of downtown Wilton. We'll see you next time.